Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be doing a quick watercolor sketch. Let's get right into my materials. For watercolors, I filled a plastic palette from the store with tubes, and I'll be talking a little bit more about um, the brands that I use later on in this video. For brushes, I kept it super simple. I used a contemporary crafts brush and a Q-Series size 12 white water media brush. For sketching, I used a Muji pencil, um, 0.5 lead. It really doesn't matter what you use in terms of pencils. I mean, it didn't matter for me because I didn't do a detailed sketch. Um, and then for erasers, I used an art eraser that's dust free. I also used a couple Inktense pencils, not too many. I'm not super comfortable with these yet, but I used, I think, a couple greens and a black for this one. All right, so I also used this kind of pop-out um, water holder. It's from Faber-Castell. It's a little bit dirty. I've used it a lot, but it's just really great for on the go. And for paper, I used cold press Lana paper. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and it's a block of paper. So now getting right into the actual watercolor. I decided to keep my palette in frame um, for this because a lot of the work I did was off camera and it involved mixing colors. So I thought maybe it'd be interesting to see my process. Um, and I didn't record the sketch for this video because it was really quick and I, I just felt that um, it wasn't really necessary as it was super simple. But if I do more detailed sketches, I will record them in future. So um, I tried to build up this piece in layers. I kind of struggled a little bit because whenever I would put down one layer, I didn't really have the patience to wait for it to completely dry. And a couple times you'll see my colors bleeding into each other. So I had to use my trusty pack of tissues in order to lift some of the um, bleeded color out of another color. You can see it's kind of happening here with the orange into the green. Um, and I leave a lot of white lines in between blocks of color in order to prevent bleeding. And then I go back in and fill them in later. But I'm, I'll be constantly working on things with tissues to make sure that um, none of the colors bleed into each other. Um, circling back to the watercolors I used for this, um, I actually went to Blick a couple months ago and bought some tubes of watercolor, a couple Winsor & Newton, and I mostly used the set of Holbein watercolors that I received as a gift from a family member a couple years ago. And I think I bought one, two Sennelier watercolors and then a couple Daniel Smith. Um, and then I deposited a little bit of each color into the little um, what are the, what were the, compartments in the watercolor palette. And then um, ta-da, I had my own, my very own customized watercolor palette. I highly recommend doing this. And I might do a video on how I chose the colors, um, but it's just really great because you get to customize your colors and instead of having sort of dull colors, um, oftentimes the colors in the pants aren't quite as vibrant. So by using uh, high quality tube watercolors, you create a higher quality pan set and plus you get to pick your own colors. So as you can see, back to the drawing, here I'm going in with the Inktense pencils and I actually found these really fun to use. They were super creamy and blended really well. And I actually really like them. I need to get a little bit more comfortable with them though before I can do an entire drawing just using them. And the blue watercolor in the Toucan's head is actually meant to be something of a highlight in the black, um, but I don't know if I really achieved the look I was going for with that. I decided to draw a toucan, I guess, because I really like drawing birds. Um, and this is kind of a bonus video, so I know it's a super, it's actually a little bit too long, but um, the actual drawing is very small and it's not super detailed. This is kind of just meant to be a fun watercolor sketch and this is actually my f first ever official voiceover. So yes, exciting. Um, as you can see, now that I've kind of finished the toucan and done all the layering, I'm going back in and painting in a light blue background. I'm doing this because I felt that the white kind of, um, it just, it was sort of boring. I didn't want to do a super detailed background though, because I was somewhat worried about taking the attention off the toucan. And this is supposed to be just a small speed sketch. So I didn't, I didn't really want to go too crazy on the background. So I just thought a very light blue would kind of contrast with the orange and the red and make the um, toucan pop a little bit. And yet it would still be fairly simple. For the eye, I didn't really feel comfortable just doing it with watercolors, so I used the Inktense pencils a lot around the eye area, and I really like the effect I created. In retrospect, I probably should have added a highlight. I used a reference photo from Wet Canvas, which is a great uh, artist resource. I highly recommend it, and I'll link the reference photo I used in the description. 
but the reference photo I used didn't have a highlight in the toucan's eye and um, I really wanted to try to mimic the reference as much as I could but in retrospect it would have looked much better if I'd put a highlight in and created my own light source probably a mistake now I'm going in with my erasers and erasing my pencil sketch because once you go over a pencil sketch in watercolor it kind of locks in the pencil and it's super hard to get out and here I'm using a q-tip to wipe off the little eraser specks and I don't know if you notice this but on the right side of the painting my hand actually has green from the palette so I've deposited a lot of dry green watercolor on the side which was super annoying but I was able to get it off after the drawing I didn't notice until the very end which is why I didn't wipe it up or anything so fun fact never put your palette right under your hand that was a very silly mistake and here I'm going in with another layer. Um, I'm using this big brush. This is the only time I used the large Series Q brush in the entire painting. I think this is my first time ever using it. I find big brushes a little bit hard to work with and a little bit intimidating, but it was kind of fun using this for the background. And just wrapping up, I'm just doing some of the details in the toucan, so the beak and um, the hair area and sort of going back in and touching up the background. And I think that's done. So thanks so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe. I'll be back with more videos every single Friday.